Hey guys, welcome back to Smoking Out Off Grid. Today I'm gonna do a review on this Nutra Seal. It's a jar sealer. It's a vacuum sealer. Mm hmm. I did order one, or Chris did order me one. That's a portable sealing machine, KZ80. But um, we couldn't get it to work. We could get the wide mouth jars to work, but not the regular mouth jars. So he went and got me this one from Carolina Readiness Supply in Waynesville, North Carolina. And so I am going to open it and get everything out here. And it actually gives you a couple of each jars, lids. And it also gives you the little tool that you can put on your keychain or whatever. And what it does is when you have the jars sealed and you get ready to use them, it opens the jars. Put that one aside. Let me set that aside. And here's the little box that the vacuum sealer come in. Okay guys, let's see what's inside the box. Instructions, the charging cord, and the machine. I did go ahead and open these. And what you can do is you can take the cord that come with it and plug it in the top of here. Oops. You gotta press it really hard. Plug it in the top of here and the bottom of here and you can suction it that way on your jars or you can take it and you can just press these down on your jars and stick this on the top of here and that is how I am going to do it because it will be easier than that cord. So, with that being said, I am going to start prepping for it. Okay guys, I have a couple different cereals here. I have the Reese's Puff Minis, and then I also have the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Minis, and then I also have a thing of Quaker Oats. So I'm going to do a couple jars of each. So with that being said, let's get these open. Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all, the reason why I'm using the jars is because we do use cereal and oatmeal on an everyday basis. And so that's why we're doing them in the jars instead of the Mylar bags. You know the big bag of cereal like that? Mm -hmm. You can get like a half gallon jars or something like that. Yeah. When you take these and do them, if you're going to leave them on the shelf for a long period of time, you can also take and put an oxygen absorber in them and put them on your shelf and it'll keep them fresh for I don't know how many years. As you can see, one jar don't even put a dent in the container. So you can fill a lot of them up with it. And then you just take your jar and you push or your lid and you push it down on it. And then just center this around the hole on it and turn it on. Take it off. 
your jar is sealed. You just take and put your ring on it. Okay, so with these, it makes for one two pound thing of Quaker oats, it makes basically three and three fourths jars. And like I said, guys, it don't take much just to put them back on here and reseal them when they get, after you use them once or twice. I, re I reseal them every single time we use them. And when you're listening to it, when you hear it rub up, that's how you know when it is done and to take it off that it is sealed. When it makes this sound right here, that's how you know when it's done, when it rubs up like that. And there are um, two jars of the Reese Puffs minis, two jars of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and four jars of the Quaker Oats. Very easy to do. Okay guys, like I said, we got this from Carolina Readiness. It was what, $25.98 or something? And I really like it. I like it better than the one we got online. It works a lot better, a lot easier to use. Um, but just to let you know, we're not sponsored in any way. So we did pay for this with our own money. And um, you can do other things, goldfish, crackers, chips, um, basically whatever you want to put up. You can put a oxygen absorber in it. Um, whatever you want and like I said it takes two seconds to reseal it each time I mean to keep it um keep it fresher and keep it lasting longer and from not getting stale or not getting bugs or not getting um to where you have to throw it out I really highly recommend it I like it and I think if you want to do your foods this way or especially stuff that you use every day as far as snacks and things like that go down to Carolina Readiness and check them out please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video thank you all right guys we've had a couple people ask us about how I make these pinto beans uh, my beans taste like the way that I do them uh, they taste like they have what's called a soup bone in it. A lot of people cook pinto beans with a bone in it, like a ham bone or a soup bone, whatever you want to call it. And I can make mine uh, where they actually taste like that, you know, the old school way like that, without putting all that in it. Uh, so, uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'll, I'll show you guys how I do it. I'm just doing this to, for a couple of people on our channel that asked me about it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a liner in it, in the crock pot. Because that makes cleanup so much easier. Yeah. Just gonna figure out how to do it. These liners make cleaning these crock pots pretty easy. Alright. This is just a one pound bag of beans. We got these from the dollar store while we was out the other day. Went ahead and grabbed those. 
instead of getting in their stash in there, so I just grabbed a pack. All I'm going to do is pour water over these beans and rinse them out. Just dump them right back in the crock pot. Make sure the liner is good. And then, pour the water in it. I'll have another thing of water. Okay, the way that I get it to taste like it's got the, the old school pinto beans is, um, like I said, a lot of people's familiar with the soup bone, stuff like that, pinto beans. If you're old and old school and you know what I'm talking about, if you grew up on eating pinto beans, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the way that I do it is I put a lot of beef bouillon cubes in it. And uh, I like mine, I'd like to put a lot of them in it. For this one crock pot, I'll put eight of them in it, eight cubes, because I want a real thick, uh, like a beef broth to cook my beans in so basically you just you know just open them up and throw them in there i've already opened this these seven just space them out around in there open this last one like i said i put eight of them in there this is all simple stuff most people probably probably already do this but like i said there's a couple of people on our channel that asked me to show how I do it so that's what I do is beef broth and one thing that I do with mine is I put garlic powder in mine that's kind of what we do to make it a little different so no certain amount or anything like that, you just put it in there. I'll put a little bit of salt in it. And then what I do is put the lid on it and put it on. I guess this is kind of the secret to cooking them. Kind of like if you buy canned beans, a lot of the canned beans you buy, when you eat them, they taste like they're halfway cooked, and which is true, they are just halfway cooked. But uh, what I do is I put my crock pot on, stay warm or low. I think most of the time I'll just leave it on low all night, on something like that low. Um, I'll leave it on low until tomorrow around 11, 12 o'clock in the morning, around noon. And I'll kick it over on high and let it go the rest of the day. And then we'll eat them around 5 or 6 o'clock. But you got to, I mean, you got to stir them every now and again, of course. Uh, tomorrow, when you turn on high, you definitely want to stir them. But as of right now, they're perfectly fine. And uh, that's how I do them. Alright guys, like I said, that's that's basically all I do is uh, the beef bouillon cubes and I put quite a bit of garlic and uh, I put salt in it and then I put it on low and let it set all night long. Then tomorrow, like I said, I'll kick it over on high. But I mean, that's that's pretty much it. And, it, and actually, whenever you eat them, they taste just like with a, with a real thick uh, beef broth in it. And it'll be pretty thick because like I said, I put eight of these in it. It'll be like, it, it'll actually taste like it, the old school beans that have like the bone in it, the bone, the... What do you call that thing? I don't know. The soup bone, people call it. Like a ham hock or, I don't know, some people throw like, I don't know, like ham bones or something in there, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's, that's it tastes just like that. To me it does. And I like them and a lot of people that eat them really like them too. So anyway, there you go.